And from USA Today, school's redneck day sparks anger. Yeah, no surprise. But let's pick this one apart for a minute because there are some interesting takeaways here. From Phoenix, when members of the student council at an Arizona high school organized a school-wide redneck day and encouraged classmates to dress and spoof accordingly, they hoped to build school spirit leading up to prom week. Instead, redneck day at Queen Creek High School has angered African Americans and civil rights leaders and touched off a debate about free speech, social stereotypes, and good taste. Wait a second. You, you have your high school named after a creek that's named after royalty? Shouldn't that be offensive to Americans who are against serving under the divine right of kings and queens? <gasps> we can find something to be offended about anywhere. Tom Lindsay, superintendent of the Queen Creek Unified School District, said the only intent of Wednesday's event was to satirize the A&E reality TV show Duck Dynasty, who's loving the PR, which follows a family of duck hunters and entrepreneurs from West Monroe, Louisiana. But some students and their family members weren't amused, among them the Reverend Ozetta Kirby, pastor of Holy Trinity Community AME Church in Mesa and vice president of the East Valley chapter of the NAACP. Quote, I'm sitting here crying and praying, said Kirby, whose grandson Marcus still is a 16-year-old junior at the school. You're crying over this? I'm sorry, Reverend. Get a sense of perspective and get a hold of yourself. Holy crap, of all the ills in the world, of all the problems, of all the deaths, of all the tragedies, you're going to cry because some high school students want to have redneck day? Because they want to make fun of a particular cultural stereotype? Because they want to have some fun with that? Can we not get over this bullshit of not being able to celebrate and laugh at our differences between each other as people, as groups of people? No. Because you are so dumb and, no, and myopic and, and just narrow-minded that you can't separate good-natured humor from malicious intent. It's so sad. It's so pathetic that this is, this, is, this is the reaction. According to Kirby, this thing really got to Marcus. When you're in 11th grade, that can break you down and make you feel at the bottom rung of the whole society where everybody is being jubilant. No kid should have to go through that. We all know the connotation of redneck. Whoa. Really? Just imagine this. Now, like, in order, like, USA Today is reporting this and doesn't bother to do the investigative journalism of just, like, figuring out know, what's, what's actually behind this quote. <gasps> oh, daddy, 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 at my school, some of the kids are having redneck day. Oh, I feel like I'm at the bottom rung of the whole society. Everybody is being jubilant and I just can't have fun anymore. Do, do you see, like, if it wasn't something like that, then this guy's just lying out of his teeth, just, just straight up through his teeth saying that this, is, that this is a big deal. No, this is looking for an excuse to be offended. Now, here we get to a serious issue. Most offensive to Kirby and others was that one student chose to wear a Confederate flag for many a grim reminder of slavery and segregation. Now, you can't really have it both ways, mister, okay? If you're using Redneck Day to, like, denigrate rednecks and put them down, then wearing a Confederate flag, oh, I'm a dumb, racist, segregationist, redneck, Confederate support... Then wearing the, red, wearing the Confederate flag is making fun of it! Do, do you not see that? You can't have it both ways and be offended at one thing and the other at the same time without revealing yourself to be an unthinking idiot who's simply looking for an excuse to be offended here. But it is, it is serious, and according to uh, Steve Montoya, prominent civil rights attorney in Phoenix, the Confederacy represents the horrible institution of slavery, and that is a direct attack on African Americans. Wearing a Confederate flag is a direct attack on African Americans. First of all, do you know that there were black soldiers fighting for the South in the American Civil War because they were fighting for... Things other than slavery, like not being a part of the union, like, you know, wanting to be independent. <sighs> but no, too many people are simply looking for an excuse, again, just to be offended. But there is some seriousness there, and if you understand history, you can understand what is the, you know, the, the, the kernel of, of, of truth to the, the legitimacy of this. But if you actually understood history, you would probably not be the kind of moron that would choose an event like this to get offended, unless you were, I don't know, some PR-hungry sicko. I, this is just... 
Uh, the Reverend Oscar Tillman, president of the Maricopa County NAACP, who grew up in the 1940s in the South, said, Our community knows what that flag represents. A school is supposed to be for education and showing people where we come from, our history, and to try not to go back to some things. How about we try not going back to this bullshit tyranny of political correctness? Lindsay said the student wearing the Confederate flag was pulled aside by an assistant principal and asked to change his clothes. What? Really? So we're going to force you into a government-run propaganda center masquerading as a public education center, and then we're going to say that you don't have the First Amendment protections of speech there. Great. Because this freedom of speech is to be able to say what other people don't want you to hear. Otherwise, it's meaningless. To be able to express yourself in ways that people might object to. Otherwise, it, it has no, no weight to it. It has, it has no meaning. But do you bother if you're a PR-seeking, politically correct cry baby no you look for the excuse and you look to government because that's what this is all about i mean being offended is one thing but the people who are offended that aren't status they don't say oh we need government to regulate speech just act as conscientious consumers and move on but really if you are a conscientious consumer of you know freedom liberty education wanting your child to grow up with a healthy mind and body you wouldn't be turning them over to a government-run school in the first place the student, who is from a state where the flag is more prevalent, did not see a negative connotation. Lindsay said, the uh, superintendent, it was explained to him that, at Arizona, that in Arizona we look at it differently. Redneck Day was mostly uneventful. Lindsay said, we apologize to any people who, because of the word redneck, were offended. By the way, being offended is fucking bullshit. Maureen Costello, director of the Teaching Tolerance Program at the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, Alabama, said schools would do well to adopt the slogan of physicians, do no harm. Yeah, and if you wanted to do no harm and you wanted to educate your child, you would not get the government involved in the first place. Jeez. As she said, do no harm to a student's sense of identity. Everyone should feel welcome. You're welcome at a school that you don't have a choice whether or not you attend. Right. Your sense of identity. If your sense of identity is so fragile that another student wearing a Confederate flag has you going breaking down at home and crying to daddy, you have bigger problems and they probably result from insufficient parenting resulting in you being a crazy, insecure, batshit, loony person who just, like, hasn't been raised properly. Is you really, like, it's part of your, what happens in a human child's mind as they're developing, as they're growing up, they develop a sense of identity. And unless you introduce a government-run education and politically correct parents who don't know any better, you're going to end up with children who are that insecure, who are the, the, these kinds of crybabies, who will use the government to impinge on freedom of speech and make a fuss about something that's total bullshit because their feelings got hurt. And they would rather manipulate the behavior of others than deal with their own emotional issues. Costello said she understands that Redneck Day was intended to bolster students' sense of feeling good about school, but said, quote, they've chosen an event that stereotypes an entire group of people, and under those circumstances, they should hardly be surprised that they also offend people. She said a student wearing a Confederate flag could easily argue that he's playing a role and he doesn't mean it, but the flag is a very potent symbol, and the school facilitated that. Costello said the school should do two things, open up a dialogue about why this was so offensive to some people, and second, to really start thinking through the kinds of events they sponsor to build school spirit. Now, if you want to take this to the extreme, this is really high school students emulating the example they get from colleges and fraternities, where you have all sorts of crazy themed parties making fun of all sorts of groups of people for no other reason than a good excuse to get drunk. So, is it malicious? For a college frat that, you know, maybe even has some black members to have, what, what do they call them? Um, inner city gangbanger parties where they're parodying black culture. Well, it's only black culture if you assign it to race in the first place. But it's not like saying nigger and like actually using something that is deliberately malicious. But... Can we do this, people? Can we get past this? Can we realize that even if someone uses the N-word, and by the way, 
the N-word really fucking offends me. Yeah, saying the N-word when you can say nigger, if people know that the way you're using it isn't malicious, because if you want to use it, and you want to actually talk about it without sounding like you've got a stick up your ass, then you should just say the word, and not be afraid that these emotionally stunted imbeciles are going to come after you, because they don't really have anything going for them anyways. If anything, this is a good way to bring out the uh, the pity party for those of you who, who do have emotional issues that prevent you from relating to the real world like the rest of us. But maybe if we let the cat out of the bag, we'd have to go in the Carlos Mencia humor direction here and actually acknowledge that, oh my gosh, everybody's racist. Yeah, because we all recognize race, we all see that there are differences, and we all assign value judgments to differences. Can we just celebrate that? Can we make fun of that? Can we enjoy the rich diversity that is the human race without stifling it and saying, no, you can't even talk about it? As she said, I hate, I think um, Costello said the school should do two things. Open up a dialogue about, about, about why this was so offensive to some people, and second, to really start thinking through the kinds of events they sponsor to build school spirit. She did predict that some who uh, objected will be told they are too sensitive. Quote, I think every one of us hates it when we're told don't feel that way, but they are honestly offended by it. It reflects a very bad chapter in their personal or cultural experience that needs to be acknowledged, discussed, and accepted. Well, let me be the one to tell you, if this woman won't take the pacifier out of your mouth, don't feel that way. Being offended is bullshit. And it reveals your own emotional insecurity and weakness. Now, I'm not going to tell you, don't be weak. Don't be emotionally insecure. Don't be full of shit. But you know what? It's probably in your best interest to not feel that way. For his part, Attorney Montoya said students have a First Amendment right to wear a Confederate flag and engage in free speech, but he warned that the line between free speech and harassment is easily breached and said a district could be held liable for allowing a racially hostile education environment. Those schools are paid for by everyone, including African Americans and other minorities, and they have the right to attend school free of harassment. Oh, you want to bring rights into this? Uh, we're going to force everybody to pay for this, <laughs> but you have the right to attend free of harassment. Yeah. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Really? That, that's your justification? Oh, because we force everybody to pay for these. Montoya won a case more than a decade ago when he sued Tempe Union High School District on behalf of an African-American girl who had asked to read a text other than Huckleberry Finn, which contains numerous instances of a racial slur. Now, I don't mean to be a traditionalist and go, well, kids have been reading Huckleberry Finn for years, and it's a way of examining racism. This is like, you don't want to talk about it? So you have an African-American girl, you have a black girl in a high school who says, I don't want to read Huckleberry Finn, I want to read something else. She's saying, no, 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 I don't want to hear that there was ever racism, that there were ever people on this planet at any point in history that didn't like me for the color of my skin. No, 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 let me read something else. Really? Now, here's the best part. Her request was denied you're going to a government school, what do you expect? And students in Tempe began to use that book as a vehicle to racially harass the girl. No, 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 no. Now, there might have been some... I'm not, I'm not going to presume that there was no racism involved here, but I'm making fun of this girl for being emotionally sensitive and in denial, not for being black. Can you separate that? Can you figure that out? The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of Montoya's client, and the taxpayers got screwed to pay for one other government boondoggle and pay off a lawyer. He said it was the first case in the country to recognize a claim under federal civil rights law for a racially hostile educational environment. Racially hostile educational environment. Every single high school student in America is at some level, if they're going to a government-run school, part of a hostile educational environment because they are forced to attend. Did you not... You, 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 can't go, you just can't go to that next level, can you? You just can't be that consistent. As Montoya said, I wish the administrators good luck. They have tough jobs, especially when facing asshole lawyers like you. This week in Kent, Washington, Sunnycrest Elementary School had scheduled White Trash Wednesday, in which barbecue would be served on trash can lids. The event was canceled Tuesday after parents objected. Get over yourselves, people. Non-interventionism is the opposite of isolationism. How so? And so does every other person. No. Do you not support our military? Do you want to get nuked? Do you think the active duty troops supporting Ron Paul are, are nuts? Evidently.